Good morning, and welcome to Kingswood Church. My name is James Preston, lead pastor, and I'm one of the clergy here at Kingswood, and we welcome you where we seek to love God, serve others, and build sacred community as followers of Jesus. We're so glad you're here today, and we welcome each of you on this beautiful winter Sunday morning. We especially welcome our guests today. We're so glad that you're here, and we pray that you'll check in with us at kingswoodumc.com guest, and let us know that you're here. If you're a first-time guest, uh, we'll send you a special gift to appreciate your presence with us online today, and feel free to call the staff or email us if you need additional information. One suggestion for all of us is to download our new Kingswood app for your smartphone, tablet, or device. Just go to the App Store and download Kingswood. It has our logo, and you'll be able to interact, register, give. There'll be so many things you can do with that beautiful new Kingswood app. Take time to do that today. Today, we uh, conclude our sermon series, Finding Peace in an Anxious World. Uh, we've looked at the Serenity Prayer written by Reinhold Niebuhr many years ago, uh, which has been adapted by recovery groups and various others to help us discern that important work of finding serenity, serenity to accept the things we cannot change, courage, courage to change the things we can't change, and the wisdom to know the difference. That courage to change things is so important as well. And so, today we conclude the series by, by the part of the prayer that says, Wisdom, the wisdom to know the difference. Maybe that's the hardest thing of the prayer and the hardest thing of our life is when do we accept certain circumstances as is? This is it. When do we find the courage to change the things we need to do? But more importantly, how do we have the wisdom, the wisdom to discern and to decide when to act and when not to? So today will be a very powerful day of exploring that in song and prayer and in scripture as we journey together in this final part of our series. Because wisdom helps us find peace. That's, that's important, especially in this anxious and difficult time with the pandemic and everything else going on. I need that wisdom. And we'll learn more about that today in worship. So again, a warm welcome to you. A welcome to our guests. Let us worship together at Kingswood Church. Jesus Christ. 
I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time that I don't know what to do, I will cast all my cares upon you. I cast all my cares upon you. I lay all of my burdens down at your feet. And any time that I don't know what more to do, I will cast all my cares upon you. join me in the words of gathering. When we are anxious and afraid, trust in the Lord with all your heart. When we cannot accept the realities we face, trust in the Lord with all your heart. When we long for courage and wisdom, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Now please join me in the opening prayer. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Hi friends, it's Miss Jen. I'm happy to see you today. Wait, maybe I'm not happy. I'm excited to see you today. Maybe I'm not excited. Maybe I'm nervous or anxious. I'm not angry. I'm not sad. Oh, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm a person that has a lot of feelings. I cry all the time when I'm happy, when I'm sad, when I'm frustrated, when I'm disappointed. How about you? Do you have a lot of emotions? A lot of feelings? Yes? What emotions do you have? Happiness? I have that feeling too. Sadness? Yes, I definitely feel sad sometimes. Anger? Arr. Ugh, frustration? Yes! I feel those too. Sometimes I also feel worried and nervous. Excited! Ah, disappointed. Ah, and 
tired. I have so, so many feelings. Sometimes my feelings are so strong, I don't know what to do. All of those feelings make me feel crazy. I know what I can do. Sometimes when I feel overwhelmed, I take a deep breath like this. Do you want to try it with me? You take a deep breath too. Ready? Let's go. When I take this deep breath, I ask God to come inside and cover all of those feelings and give me peace over my emotions when they get too strong. When I fill up my lungs with air, I imagine God filling me up too. Let's try it one more time. Are you ready? Whether I'm happy or sad, mad or worried, excited or disappointed, I invite God to come in and give me his peace. God tells us in the Bible that he wants his peace to be with us. In John 14, verse 27, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Taking a deep breath is my way of saying, thanks God, I'll take it. So remember wherever you are, when things feel crazy and all those feelings feel really, really strong, you can stop and take a deep breath and God will fill you with his peace. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for your peace. Thank you for sending Jesus to teach us about your peace. Help us remember that true peace only comes from you. In your strong name we pray, amen. All right, friends, thanks. We'll see you next week. Good morning. The first reading this morning is Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. The value of wisdom. My child, if you accept my words and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, if indeed you cry out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk blamelessly, guarding the paths of justice and preserving the way of his faithful ones. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity, every good path. For wisdom will come into your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Prudence will watch over you, and understanding will guard you. The second reading this, this morning is from John, chapter 14, verses 25 to 31. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs so that when it does occur, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us be on our way. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Amen. The Lord, the Lord, the
Again, good morning to all of you and a special welcome to our guest today, uh, to Kingswood Church. We're so glad you're here today. As we conclude the sermon series, as I mentioned earlier, Finding Peace in an Anxious World. Over these last weeks, we've used the Serenity Prayer written by Reinhold Niebuhr, used by recovery groups and other leaders and people throughout the world. We've used that prayer along with scripture to help us find peace, shalom, comfort, strength, in this very tumultuous time. And so over these last weeks, we've heard uh, Pastor Clayton define serenity. What does it mean to find serenity as a follower of Christ? And then several weeks ago, we talked about how do we find the ability to accept the things we can't change, the courage to change the things we can. And today we look at wisdom, wisdom to know the difference. That's an important part of the prayer. And so I wanna start off with just reminding us about this important concept of wisdom. Wisdom in the Greek is the word Sophia, a feminine word uh, that talks about wisdom uh, as one that guides us in knowledge and understanding and all of those things and is used throughout New Testament scripture. But in the book of Proverbs, which we faced and dealt with mostly through this series, that book that follows the book of Psalms, it's a small book of wisdom literature, Proverbs, teachings, sayings, historically attributed to Solomon. The Hebrew word for wisdom really has to be partnered with the three words that connect with wisdom. So there are three Hebrew words that I want you to hear about. One is dath, which means knowledge, and that's just basic morality, knowing the difference between good and evil, bad and good, wrong and right. And so dath, uh, or dath is a knowledge-based reality, but it's deeply connected to wisdom. And chokmah, which is the word that we basically use for wisdom and in translated for wisdom is a step up. It's beyond that basic knowledge of good and evil, bad and right, wrong and right, whatever it is. This is a deeper, deeper place of being guided by God's direction and seeing things even better and more clearly that it's more than right or wrong, but how do I avoid doing harm? How do I do what is integrous? And then finally, bina, uh, the Hebrew word bina is the word understanding that we really do understand fully God's law and direction for us. And you'll hear in the reading from Proverbs today, as you did, those three words interchanging themselves as a part of our study together. What does it mean to have wisdom, wisdom to make decisions? It's hard, isn't it? It's hard when we pray this prayer, the surrender to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can. Most often for me, it gets muddy. I'm always trying to discern God's wisdom for me in decision making. And those decisions are sometimes decisions about, you know, whether I'm going to act or say something about something that I, with which I disagree or that I'm going to speak more deeply into a situation or I'm going to call myself or someone to change. But sometimes it's even bigger, bigger issues, job changes, relationship challenges, moving. I could be a lot of those things. And sometimes it's deep moral decisions deep moral decisions about actions and decisions and reflections and children and all of the things that we face in the world that are often some of the most tumultuous things we face. Uh, several years ago, a friend of mine was making a very, 
very critical decision in his life. It was about his future, a vocational change, a job change. It was really an important time of discernment. He called me and asked me if I would be part of a clearing committee. And I said, well, sure. I knew about clearing committees. They were begun in the 1600s in the Friends Church, the Quaker Church, as a way for people to discern difficult and hard decisions. And this is how a clearing committee basically works. Uh, you call together people you deeply trust. And what you do is, is you gather in a room and people wait in silence. After a long period of silence, you present your dilemma. I'm looking at making this job change. I'm thinking about getting married. I'm thinking about moving somewhere. I'm facing a hard decision about my health or whatever it might be. And then you invite these friends to sit in silence and then they come back and then they begin to ask questions. There's not judgment, there's not direction, and hopefully there's no bias, but throughout a process of silence, questions, silence and questions, and finally a final reflection, you're hopeful that the questions, the questions from the people you deeply trust and the silence to hear God's direction will lead you to the right decision. I think that was one of the most powerful experiences of my life as I sat in that room with five or six other people. My friend sat sort of in the middle. He reflected on his dilemma and his challenge. We just asked questions. We didn't say what he should do. We just asked questions. Will, what will this mean for your family? What are you most fearful of? You know, it was those things. And what we began to see was this ability for wisdom to come in from the questions, knowledge to come in, and eventually understanding. At the end, when we reflected back and he reflected to us, the decision wasn't quite made, but he had some tools, some reflection, some depth to go deeper in his final decision. I found that powerful. I think about that in our own understanding as followers called Methodist Christians. You know, our, our founder, just an average guy and clergy person, John Wesley, in the 1700s founded the Methodists to renew the Anglican Church. Our name Methodist comes from that weird word of being methodical in our faith. You know, daily prayer, small groups, all the things that keep us terribly organized. We're methodical. We're Methodists. Wesley used some uh, experiences of his Anglican experience to create an understanding of how we make decisions and how we seek wisdom. Sometimes people call it the Wesleyan quadrilateral, a four-sided box, but in reality, one side is larger than the other. The Wesleyan quadrilateral says scripture is our primary revelation. We should spend a lot of time reflecting on scripture in deep and hard and even simple decisions. The word of God will guide us. But we don't live with scripture alone because God gifts us with three other things. God gives us with tradition, the traditions of the church, the creeds of the church, the tradition of our experience. God gives us a mind and a brain and science and all of those important things for decision making. Wesley called that reason. And finally, the experience, our experience and the experiences of others come together with the primacy of scripture to help us make a decision. Sometimes we call that the Wesleyan quadrilateral. So when making hard decisions, much like the Clearness Committee, we turn to Scripture primarily, but we also, what has the church said? What is my experience? What is the experience of others? What are the experiences of other people and other cultures? And then finally, what, what's rational? What are the reasons? What does science speak into this? What do we know now about health or about whatever? Those important elements are part of our decision making. I want us to look at the two passages today to also help us to understand that concept of the wisdom to know the difference. We've been spending time in the Hebrew Scriptures in the Old Testament book of Proverbs, which follows the book of Psalms. Proverbs are wisdom sayings, and again we go back to that word, chokmah, where wisdom is literally translated, but remembering da'ath and bina as well as words that interchange. Listen now as we study chapter 2 of Proverbs to give us some, some kind of systems or steps and receiving and using wisdom to know the difference. My son, or in one translation, my child, accept my words and store up my commandments or laws. Turn your ear toward wisdom and stretch your mind toward understanding. Hear that interplay of the three Hebrew words? We're invited to turn our ear to God's wisdom, which means we have to be intentional to take time to listen to that wisdom, 
to sit in silence and allow God to speak to us and to spend time in the Word. It's there we're also leaning toward understanding. Call out to God for insight and cry aloud for understanding. There's that Bina word, again, calling us to wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And this is very critical for us. Seek it like silver. Search for it like a hidden treasure. So this is not something we just kind of, oh, is it here? Oh, no, no matter. It's something extremely important and extremely valuable. And much like finding something we love deeply, like our phones, we search out wisdom every day for our life. Then you will understand, there's the word again, the fear of the Lord. Now, we often struggle with this, and we've talked about this in the series. The fear of the Lord is not so much being afraid of God. The fear of the Lord is, of the Lord is having deep respect for God and deep intentionality with God, and acknowledging God's greatness and awesomeness and ability to guide our lives. We will have understanding when we fear the Lord, and then we will discover knowledge of God back to Doth. The Lord gives wisdom, again, hokmah. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Do you see the interchanging of these three important words in discerning next steps? God reserves the ability for those with integrity. So integrity is a part of our wisdom decision. If we find ourselves not embracing integrity, the integrity and morals of which we find important, then we know we've wandered off the track. God is a shield for those who live a blameless life. He protects the paths of justice. So if justice is not involved, if we find ourselves on the side of injustice, then the wisdom is before us in making our decisions. In fact, this wisdom guards the ways of those who are loyal to God. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, every good course. Wisdom will enter your mind and knowledge will fill you with the light. Discretion will guard your understanding and understanding will protect you. Wisdom will rescue you from the path of evil and from the people who twist their words. What a powerful word for us that when we acknowledge these three Hebrew concepts of understanding, knowledge and wisdom, when we are leaning our ear toward that wisdom, when we are opening our mind and heart to understanding and knowledge, when we spend time in the Word, when we're intentional about tradition, experience, and reason, then we're able to find and answer the question, is this the time to act or is this the time to accept? I find that very helpful. I find this very important. And I, I guess what I would say to you is, you're not, I'm not, we are not going to find ourselves in the wisdom of God if we're not taking the time to seek it. Does that make sense? If we don't have a regular prayer life, if we don't have regular spiritual disciplines, if we don't find ourselves in worship and studying the word, if we're not sitting in that silence for God to speak into our heart, then we'll make decisions that are not necessarily wise or understanding or aware of the knowledge of God. The second passage today comes from us to John 14, and it's a text we often use around funerals and around Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is speaking to the disciples, and I just want to lift up this one part of the passage because I think this is another element in seeking wisdom to discern decisions. Jesus says, I have spoken these things to you while I'm with you, and the companion, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I told you. Now what's interesting, the word companion with the common English Bible translates as companion, often gets translated as advocate, and sometimes as Holy Spirit, but the word, the ancient word, the Greek word, is paraclete. Paraclete from the word parakletos, which means all of those things, advocate, companion, guide, spirit. In fact, some translations will not translate the word, they'll use the word paraclete, because of its deep meaning in all three of those. By using one English word, we miss the concepts of advocate, companion, guide, and spirit. So the Holy Paraclete, that's an ancient phrase, means that God gives us the Holy Spirit as companion, guide, advocate, and director so that we might be more in touch with God's wisdom. And here's what's interesting that wraps up this whole series together. I find this fascinating that Jesus' next words after the Spirit coming and for us to seek God's wisdom, hear this, peace, <laughs> peace I leave with you. My peace I give you, I give to you not as the world gives. 
Do not be troubled or afraid. You have heard me tell you, yes, I'm going away and then returning to you. If you have loved me, you would be happy that I'm going to the Father because the Father is greater than me. I've told you before, it happens so that when it happens, you will believe. And then he goes on to say, Rather, he comes so that the world would know that I love the Father and do just as the Father has commanded me. Get up, we're leaving this place. And then he calls the disciples to leave. Jesus reminds the disciples, and Jesus reminds you and me of this deep promise he gave them in the midst of such struggle and uncertainty. God sends the Holy Spirit. God sends the companion, the advocate, the wisdom giver. God sends the paraclete, parakletos. The paraclete, that part of God, that part of the Trinity, is there for us to listen, to be in touch with, to be intentional, so that when we come to that point in the prayer, oh God, we pray for the wisdom to know the difference between accepting our reality or changing our reality, then we are more in touch with that wisdom that God promises. So as we conclude this series, I'm sure we're all facing decisions, small and large, which we all long for so that we indeed might find peace. And I would encourage you that through this series to continue to concern and, and think about spiritual practices. What does your prayer life look like? Are you intentional each morning or evening or afternoon to spend time in prayer with God listening, especially around those hard decisions? Are you spending time in the Word besides a Sunday morning worship service? Are, are you doing a devotional piece? Are you reading a psalm? Maybe you should read through the Proverbs, but how are you and I spending time building the communication so that we hear the Holy Spirit's directive? And let us remember those good words from John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, that Scripture is our primary revelation. But how does tradition, experience, and reason speak into our life and our decisions? And are we listening? Do we have people around us that help us make those hard decisions when we face them? Because often when we're deeply connected to the wisdom of God, as Jesus said, we're connected to the peace of God. I confess to you that I often make decisions about my life and about my family and about this church and about all kinds of things, the greater church. And sometimes I've made those in a quick decision without con conferring with people, without praying about them. I just confess that sin. And almost every time, those decisions are the wrong ones. It's often when Proverbs says we base ourselves with our ear leaning toward wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. When we take the time to really discern and hear the voices of others, when we spend time in the Word of God, we can indeed say, God, give us the wisdom to know the difference. One of my dear friends uh, faced a challenge of finally admitting his struggle over alcohol, his struggle of an addiction to alcohol, the reality that he was an alcoholic. This prayer became critical to his life and to his decision making, and he talked about all of the importance of spending time with God because it was spending time with God that he was able to have the serenity to accept the truth that he was powerless over alcohol. He could, not, he could not face it. He could not deal with it. He could not control it himself. And so he was able to say, God, I turn this to you. I accept with serenity this thing I cannot change. And then he said, he began to then be in this intentional uh, effort of being in recovery and recovery groups and also spending more time in prayer and scripture, uh, spending time in listening and journaling. And he said, then he began to find the courage to change the things and to seek the forgiveness and to do the renewal. His addiction would not be changed, but the way he lived with it and worked in recovery would be. And so he found the courage to be honest with others, to not hide his addiction, and in fact, to embrace healing and change. And he said throughout his life and throughout that process, he's always praying for the wisdom to know when to act and when not to. So whether it's about our personal life, about addiction, about relationships, about the church, about the world, about issues of injustice, Lord, we pray for all of those things. Acceptance, courage, 
serenity, and wisdom. Reinhold Niebuhr wrote this prayer, and he wrote a much longer prayer. We often stick with the short one, but I want to read the whole prayer as our closing. This is the full version of the serenity prayer with which we've spent so much time over these past four weeks. So hear the words. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as he did the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with God forever and the next. May this be our prayer. Amen. Hi again, I'm, I'm Clayton. I'm one of the pastors here at Kingswood. And as we enter into this moment in space for prayer, we want to lift up those in need of strength, healing, and comfort today. We want to be in prayer for Jean Taylor, a charter member of Kingswood who passed away on January 24th. We want to be in prayer for Don Jones, for Zach Peterzak, for June Yates, and for our new bishop, Bishop John Hopkins. And so with all of that before us, let us go to God in prayer now. Holy God, we were reminded today that you give us your wisdom. We experience this wisdom through your Holy Spirit that is with us, guiding us each day. It is through the Spirit that we are never alone. Your presence, God, is always always with us. It is through your presence that amid anxiety that we do not have to be afraid or troubled because you are indeed with us. You're caring for us. You're walking alongside each and every one of us. This is what allows us to have the wisdom to know the difference. This week, may we recognize your presence with us and your wisdom, and peace, O oh God. And we pray all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus, as we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So as we now enter into this time and space uh, for giving, for offering, I, I want us to be reminded that out of our abundance, that we continue to love God, to serve others, and to build sacred community. And one of the ministries, as we continue to give to the work of Kingswood, that we're able to support is uh, the adult ministry team. And we're able to have Bible studies as we're having our Peace and Anxious World study right now. So as you give and think about ways that we can continue to love God and serve others and build a sacred community, as we continue to give to Kingswood, that is one of the ways that we're able to provide, even in the midst of a pandemic, where we can get on Zoom and still participate in learning and in community together. And now there's three ways to do that. The first way is you can still mail a check to 401 West Dundee Road, and we'll receive that here at the church. The second way is to go to our website, kingswoodumc slash giving, and click the Donate tab, and you'll be able to give in that way. And now a third way, as, as you probably are aware now, but we have an app. And so I encourage you, first of all, to download the app, and you can click Online Giving on that app straight from your phone and be able to give in that way. But whatever way that you give, Remember, we continue to love God, to serve others, and to build sacred community. Amen.
Friends, just a few announcements before we go back into this day, and I pray that you're well. Again, a warm welcome to Kingswood, where we seek to love God, serve others, and build sacred community. I do hope as a guest, you've signed in on our guest tab at kingswoodumc.com, and I please invite you to offer your prayers via our website. Remember, next Sunday, we'll be celebrating communion, so have your bread and juice ready. And we'll also be celebrating and remembering our baptism. So I hope you have a little cup of water or a glass of water. We won't pour it all over the room, so calm down. But we hope you'll be a part of that very special service next week. We want to thank you for joining us for this important sermon series, Finding Peace in an Anxious World. And we hope that it's been a, a good time for you to find some serenity, peace, and courage. We are offering one more, a one-time, one-session study and discussion this Tuesday, February 2nd at 7 p.m. Reverend Brittany Isaac, one of the authors of the book by the same name, will lead this study at 7 p.m. via Zoom. You can sign up online or contact me, but you don't even have to read the book. It's just going to be a wonderful time of hearing from one of the authors and learning together. Our new Kingswood app is here for our, your smartphone, tablet, and device. I mentioned it earlier. You can access worship. You can give. You can offer prayer concerns. You can learn about events and communicate all through this amazing app. Go to the App Store and download the Kingswood UMC app. You'll see our logo. It's easy to find, download, and then begin to enjoy this wonderful app. It's also time for care packages for college students and military persons. What a wonderful ministry of helping college students and people serving our country in the military to receive a gift so that they know we love them and are praying for them. The deadline is tomorrow, February 1st, to sign up to sponsor. You can go to the webpage or see the link in the e-news today, and you'll be able to sign up and help folks. If you're having any trouble, contact me, and I'll be glad to help you. 
Ash Wednesday is Wednesday, February 17th, with services at 12 noon and 7 p.m. online. Ash, uh, ashes will be available through a little special kit. We'll be sending information about that, and that will begin the 40-day season of Lent. Our theme is Wilderness, Where God Shapes Us, and there'll be a book study group, both one-time studies and weekly study of the book Speaking of Sin by Barbara Brown Taylor. Sign up online. Zoom Coffee Fellowship is today at 11 after this service. Today is fun on 5th because it's the 5th Sunday. We'll be playing some games. Sign up or, or click on to the link and let us know and join us there. With recent directives from the governor and bishop, we're working through the changes that are coming by moving to Tier 1. We are moving from 10 to 25. The church office is still open Monday and Tuesday, 9 to 3, Wednesday, 9 to noon. Closed on Thursdays due to the food pantry, but open virtually on Thursdays and Fridays. We're revising guidelines, and you'll begin to see new plans emerge in the month of March. But again, we welcome you. And finally, receive this benediction as we go forth from this place. May you indeed have the serenity to accept the things you cannot change. May you have the courage to change the things you can and as we prayed today, may you have wisdom, knowledge, understanding to know the difference. For indeed, God sends the Comforter, the Spirit, to guide us. Amen.